now we have all the events we need to get our character moving. Now hopefully you're not like me and you haven't tried to jump ahead and program these into your character because we're not going to be programming them into our base character. Our base character is going to be used for a different purpose and I'm going to show that purpose when we start talking about variables. For now, get rid of all these events, hit compile and save and leave your base character completely clean. Back in the blueprints folder, we're going to right click on base character and create a child blueprint class. We're going to call this B underscore hero or player or anything you want to call it if you already have a name for your character. I'm going to call it hero though for simplicity's sake. Our hero is going to be what we're controlling in the world. And he is the definitive character that we're going to be working with. So I'm not going to pull any bait and switch on you in future and go, oh, actually we're using this character. Going back to our game mode tutorial, we're going to open that up and select our hero character. Compile, save, close. Double click on your hero character and you'll be taken to this page. Click on the event graph and we're going to get rid of the tick and the begin overlap. We will use the begin play here at a later date. Next, we're going to call our events that we just programmed in. I want jump. Crouch. Move forward. Move right. Look up. And look right. There are the six events that we've created. Using the scroll wheel allows me to zoom out of this graph. The two events that we're going to start with aren't necessarily the most important, but I'm going to start with them to show you the extra work that's gone into the character blueprint class. Let's scroll up to jump. Right click on the graph and type in jump. This time, I want you to scroll up here and see we have a character submenu. We want to select jump with a blue F next to it, not the action event, this. This is a pre-made script designed by Epic Games to help this character jump. All we need to do is plug in the pressed button into jump. To show you how this works, compile, save, move your tab over or close it. Now when I hit play and I click on the level to make sure I'm in the level. And now when I hit spacebar, I'm jumping. Congratulations, your character is coming alive. If you have a gamepad plugged in as I do, then pressing A or X will make your character jump. And it's really that simple for jumping. Unfortunately, that's as simple as it's going to get though, and we're only gonna get more complicated from here. So press escape. Crouch is only a slight bit more complicated, depending on how you want your crouch set up. You might be the sort of person who wants to press crouch and leave it there. Or you might be the sort of person that holds crouch. For time's sake, I'm going to start by explaining how we're going to program a hold crouch. And then later on down the track, not much later on, I'm going to discuss programming a toggle crouch. So you can pick which one you want, or if you so desire, we can set it up in such a way that the player can decide what they want to do and set that up in an options menu. Personally, that's what I do in my own game project because I want to give the player that choice. And any additional choices you can give the player will make your game that much better. 
So crouching has two nodes pre-designed for us. Right click and type in crouch and click on crouch with the blue F. We're going to plug pressed into crouch. Now right click again, and type in un space crouch. This will uncrouch our character. And we're going to plug this into release. So this is as simple as it gets if you wanted a hold to crouch system. Click compile, click save. There's one more thing we need to do before we can crouch though. Crouch by default is turned off in our character. We're going to go and toggle it on. Click on the character movement component over here. Then go over to the search details menu here and type in crouch. You can see here under nav movement, movement capabilities, here is a tick box and it is as it explains. If this box isn't ticked, we're not crouching. So we're going to tick it. And now we're going to go compile and save. And back over to the map, click play, click on the level so that you are controlling the character and holding control will crouch your character. Releasing will uncrouch. And the same will go for your gamepad. And that's it, it's ready to go. You can jump and crouch. So now we're gonna add some movement to our character. To do this, we're going to need another node, which is called add movement input. Select the add movement input node. And the first thing we're going to do is copy it. Holding control and pressing C, we'll copy a node that's selected. Holding control and pressing V, we'll paste said node to the nearest location to your mouse. The first thing we're going to plug in is our executable. Next, you'll notice that we have some colored nodes here. And if you watch the first video, you will know that this shade of green is a float value. This is where our color coding comes in really handy. We know exactly where this value is meant to plug into this node, or more accurately, where it can plug into. So we're going to drag the axis value into the scale value, and then we need one more node. Right click and type in get actor forward vector. This is a vector node. It represents an X, Y, and Z coordinate. Specifically, this one is for our forward vector. This is a yellow node and this is a yellow node and you get the hang of it. There we go. We're going to do the same thing for the first two steps here for our move right. Plug in the executable, plug the axis value into the scale value. You'll remember it was also called scale value when we punched it in, in the settings. And this time we're going to get actor right vector. Yellow goes to yellow and there it is. Let's test it out, compile, save, back to the map, hit play, click on the map, and now with WSAD or your joystick, you should be able to move your character. Next, we're going to add our ability to look. It's easy enough for PC. All we're going to do is right click and type in add controller pitch input and add controller your input. So all we need to do for the mouse input is click and drag pitch to look up axis value to value and your will be the same. Execute node and axis value to value. Now, when we click compile and save, 
and go over to our map and click on our level, we should be able to look around. So now you should have full movement of your character. So for those of you who aren't a fan of inverted looking, you will notice that the mouse is naturally inverted to look up and down. So for those of you that are a fan, congratulations, you don't have to change this. Although I would still highly recommend that we revisit this later for our options menu so that the player can choose what they want. For those of us who prefer a non-inverted setting, go back to your project settings and under the lookup mouse Y value, set that scale value to a minus one. Back over in our level, if we hit save and hit play, now pushing up on our mouse pad, we'll look up and pushing down, we'll look down. And there you have it. Your character is being controlled in your level. You can jump around, you can crouch, and you can start to feel how your game might play.